Welcome in to worship here at Woodbury Lutheran Church in our online campus at live.woodburylutheran.org. Uh, we're so excited that you are here with us. and We want to invite you to invite someone else to be here with us as well. We recognize that through this online medium, we are spread out through a lot of different places. You might be in your home, in your dorm room, anywhere else, watching on your phone. Uh, we are excited about that opportunity. So right now, our uh, online service hosts are going to put a link in the chat for you to click on and invite someone to worship with us. And it's a great day to invite someone to worship because it's Palm Sunday. That's right, we are kicking off Holy Week this week with the celebration of Palm Sunday as Jesus makes his final turn into uh, Jerusalem to complete his mission uh, for why he came here uh, on earth. So we're excited to do that as we finish up our sermon series called Are You Still Watching? where we've been talking about the end times as well. We also want to invite you to uh, follow us on social media, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. We've got all types of pages for you to follow and keep up with what's going on as we continue uh, to move along here in this 21st century age with all sorts of different kinds of ways to get connected here at woodburylutheran.org. Uh, now, for this entire uh, sermon or for this entire worship experience, we want to get you as involved as possible. We have a sermon experience, which is tailor-made for just this, uh, this worship setting, but we also have a lot of different functions that you can use throughout the entire uh, worship time that we have here today. I already mentioned the, the uh, chat box. You can go ahead and type amen or maybe hosanna uh, on a day like today with Palm Sunday. You can type anything in the chat there or just introduce yourself and let us get to know you a little bit more. If you want to get to know us even more than that, you can click the connect with us button, which you'll see right at the top of the screen there. That's just going to allow you to connect with us, to allow you to get to know more about us and share some information about you so that we can uh, continue on in this relationship, uh, uh, this body of believers as well. There's also a button for giving that you'll see. Now, during the service, our uh, online service hosts are going to put links in the chat, which are going to point you to these things. But if you want to click on the giving button now, you can certainly go there and check it out uh, before you go any further with it there. Of course, there's the request prayer button that you see at the very bottom of the screen as well. You can click that button and somebody will be there to intercede with you in whatever prayers you might need. So if you're looking for some prayer, you can request prayer in that way as well. And of course, we love next steps here at Woodbury Lutheran. And what that means is that we have this hamburger button at the top of the screen. You can click that button now and you can go in and actually create a profile so that the next time that you come back to worship with us here in this online setting, you'll be all ready to get in and start worship without having to type who you are or, or get to know you uh, when you get here the next time. So we want to invite you to do that as well. Now our, sermon, our, uh, our worship time is going to be about an hour today. We'll have some music, we'll have some teaching, some scripture reading, and of course uh, a message that is designed for you. Now kids, during that message, you're going to be able to go in and uh, be ready to go to our kids link section, which is going to be a message tailored directly for you. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, adults or anyone else who is ready to celebrate communion with us will be celebrating communion today as well. So I want to invite you now to go and get those elements ready so that when the time comes and uh, Pastor Tom is ready to lead us in communion, you'll be ready to join along with us in that as well to celebrate that meal with us today. Now, uh, we are worshiping here online, but if you are looking for a way to worship in person, we just want to let you know too that we have... Uh, two different campuses that are meeting in person. We're practicing safe social distancing and everything along those lines, but one up in Stillwater, which is our Oak Hill campus, or here in Woodbury at our Valley Creek campus, which is where we're recording right here and right now. All right, I threw enough at you. There's a lot of information out there, so I'm just kind of wondering, are you still watching? Our online service starts right now. Today's scripture reading is found in Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Go into the village over there, he said. As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with its colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say, the Lord needs them, and he will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, Tell the people of Jerusalem, Look, your king is coming to you. 
He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him and threw their garments over the colt, and he sat on it. Now most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David! Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Praise God in highest heaven! The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this? they asked. And the crowds replied, It's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord.
Welcome into worship here at Woodbury Lutheran Church and live.woodburylutheran.org. Happy Palm Sunday to you. Happy start of Holy Week as well. As we come together here today, we are finishing off our sermon series called Are You Still Watching? with the last episode, episode six, called The King, which also is going to start our Holy Week observance as we come together to uh, see Jesus make his final turn into uh, into his mission that he has come here on earth uh, to finally fulfill. So with that, with all of the Holy Week things that we have going on, we have a lot of different services which we're working on uh, to get ready for you both in person and online. Uh, it all starts sort of Monday, Thursday with uh, our in-person and online worship. Also Good Friday, we have in-person and online worship. On Easter Saturday, or on Holy Saturday, excuse me, we have an Easter vigil, which will be online only, and of course, it all culminates with Easter Sunday, where we have uh, services in person uh, at Oak Hill and our Valley Creek campuses uh, at various times, which you can see on the screen right there. Uh, and of course, uh, you can go to info.woodburylutheran.org to find out any information about all of the different things that we have going on. And there's a ton. There's so much that I, I can't even get into all of it without making this a two-hour uh, service. But as we begin Holy Week, we also make our beginning of this service today uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as we come together today to, uh, to start this service, we confess the common faith uh, that all started back in that Holy Week uh, 2,000 years ago, and we've been confessing the same faith ever since. So we confess together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's continue our worship now with our next hymn.
Every time during service when we gather, we have the opportunity to lift up prayers for one another. Uh, for those within our community here at Woodbury Lutheran, for those outside of our community. And one of the unique ways we do that during Holy Week is through a prayer vigil. You can go to info.woodburylutheran.org to sign up and find more information out about our 48-hour prayer vigil, which is kicking off. Monday, Thursday after service. What a great chance for us to slow down and to go to the Lord in prayer for all the things that are on our hearts. I want to encourage you to take that step. Maybe you're saying, I don't know how to pray. There'll be uh, different resources there to help you in that journey. Uh, maybe you just need a time to, to just sit back and prepare your hearts for a Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Info.woodburylutheran.org, 48-hour prayer vigil. Let's go to the Lord now in prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity on this Palm Sunday that we have to gather together as your people to remember our King who came riding into Jerusalem on a lowly donkey to fulfill the prophecy that he would come in lowly and humble our King. And as we see our King this day, we are reminded that one day he will be coming again, uh, not riding on a donkey, but riding on a powerful horse that none will miss. And until that day comes, Lord, through the ups and the downs, we give all of that to you. Whatever prayers are on our hearts and minds this day, we know that you hear them, that you will answer them. We continue to think today specifically of those who, who are wrestling with the loss of this teenager in an accident a couple of weeks ago now. Uh, we think of all those dealing with COVID-related illnesses and struggles and challenges. Uh, we think of those around the world who are hungry, don't have food. A, a great fire that took place in Bangladesh in a refugee camp that has, has made a difficult life even more challenging. Uh, for those in Central and South America dealing with challenging times, in our own nation, in our own neighborhoods, in our own families, we give all of those to you now knowing that you hear them and you will answer them. As we are so bold now as to pray the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. One of the values that we have at Woodbury Lutheran Church is we value our community by serving and welcoming. And for the, the history of our church over these last 53 years, community has been such an important part of, of who we are as a congregation and over the last few years, we've been attempting uh, to be more intentional about connecting with, with local schools around us. And we've been doing that in a number of ways, uh, sending out gift cards to teachers, thanking them for what they're doing, uh, intentionally praying for what's happening in our schools, uh, being a, a church that's there for our schools. 
And so when this stra- tragedy struck a couple weekends ago here in, in Woodbury, we wanted to come around uh, our community once again. And so Sarah Dibburn, who's on staff at our, at our church, also is on staff at Eastridge High School. And she said, you know what? It would really be helpful if we brought breakfast to the staff and to the teachers at Eastridge High School. And so we were able to do that uh, just last week. And as we spent time there with, with the teachers and staff, we were able to, to talk with them about the challenges that they've been experiencing and had some great conversation. Uh, funny that their, their principal had some nice words to say uh, about Pastor Tim and myself, uh, that we were able to be there with them to listen, uh, to just spend some time walking with this, the schools. They've gone through this, this big tragedy of the loss of of a student, but also coming back to in person and all that they've had to walk through. Uh, we heard some other quotes just about us as, as a church and how nice it is that even though we're, we're kind of separated, we've been able to come in and to come around that school in so many different ways. Uh, we want to live out our values in ways that are real and impact the world around us. And so thank you again, Woodbury Lutheran, for your generosity Uh, that allows us to reach out in meaningful ways uh, that impact the lives of those right here in our very own community. At this time, we're going to have the opportunity to again receive our offerings. And as as we do so, it's in response to to our king, that king who came uh, riding lowly and humble into Jerusalem to, to give his life as a sacrifice that we might have forgiveness that we might be redeemed, bought back from our sin to be given brand new life. And so it's always in response to the generosity of our God that we give back generously to the mission and to the ministry of his kingdom here on this earth as we wait for him to come back again in all of his glory. We continue now by receiving our offerings and singing a song of praise. creation suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to lift one cry and then from north to south and east to west we'd hear Christ be magnified Were the whole earth echoing his eminence, his name would burst from sea and sky, from rivers to the mountain tops. We'd hear Christ be magnified. be magnified let his praise rise Christ be magnified in me oh Christ be magnified from the altar of my life Christ be magnified in me when it 
idols, I'll stand strong and worship you. If it puts me in the fire, I'll rejoice because you're there too. I won't be formed by feelings, I hold fast to what is true. If the cross brings transformation, I'll be crucified with you. Because death is just the doorway to resurrected life. If I join you in your sufferings, then I'll join you when you rise. And when you Christ be magnified. And one of the reasons we want Christ to be magnified is because his magnificence overshadows and destroys our sin. As we prepare to receive Holy Communion again this day, we have a a time of confession. As, As Jesus entered into Jerusalem riding a donkey, in an uproar, the people asked, who is this? For all the times we miss seeing Jesus, we seek forgiveness. We confess together, Father, so often we are blinded by our own expectations of how we want you to move and act. Forgive us for seeing right past you in so many ways. Give us eyes to see you as we wait for Jesus to return. Friends, when Jesus comes a second time, he will not be missed. Today, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have received forgiveness for all your sins, and your eyes have been opened to see Jesus. Amen. One of the beautiful things about Holy Communion is we believe that Jesus actually shows up in the bread and in the wine, that he is just as present in this meal as he was that day he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And so if you have questions about Holy Communion and what's, what's going on, uh, this is an invitation, not an expectation. Uh, but I would love to have further conversation. Just put it in the chat. One of our service hosts will get your information. If you're not quite sure what's happening in communion, we'd love to have that conversation with you. But we believe that this is a gift given to those who come confessing Jesus as Lord of their lives. Those who say, we believe that he's actually present in the bread and in the wine. And those who desire to leave behind a life of sin, to follow Jesus as Lord and Savior. At this time, if you have your communion elements, I would encourage you to to take them out with you. And uh, and I would encourage you to say uh, these words of institution right along with me as we bless uh, the bread and the wine. Our Lord Jesus Christ... On the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. At this time, you can share communion with one another using the words for for the bread, take and eat. This is the very body of Christ. And for the wine, take and drink. This is the true blood of Jesus shed for you. 
And if there's someone in your home that doesn't receive communion, you can share this blessing with them. Know that Jesus loves you and he will always be with you. And so go ahead, if you haven't yet at this time, take and eat the very body of Christ given for you. And take and drink the true blood of Jesus shed for you. Now go in peace knowing that your sins are forgiven. We continue in our worship by singing.
of the king. It is so good to be with you today, sharing God's word and encouraging you um, as you follow Jesus. Uh, kids, at this time, you can grab your mobile device and jump on our kids link so that you too can grow as a disciple of Jesus. I also want to encourage you uh, to pick up a scripture card as we enter into Holy Week and as we look to the promises of Jesus and the fulfillment of everything that he has accomplished for us. What a great time to deepen as disciples of Jesus. You know, we've been at this series for six weeks now. Today ends our sermon series entitled End Times, Are You Still Watching? And I'm so grateful that you've been watching and attentive to the things that God is doing in our lives and in your life. And we've been unpacking a certain question, questions that the disciples asked Jesus in regards to the end times. They ask this, when will all these things happen? What will be the sign of your return and the end of the age? In other words, Jesus had set the stage for the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. And it hadn't happened, obviously. And so they were asking, when is this going to happen? How will we know? How will we know that we're in the end times? And how will we know that you are returning? And Jesus so graciously, so kindly leads his disciples and speaks truth to them and communicates that we are in the end times. There's another question that has been asked throughout the ages. And even at that time, even today on Palm Sunday, you might be wondering why I'm wearing my Palm Sunday shirt to celebrate Jesus entering into Jerusalem. And people wondered, who is this guy? Who is Jesus? And for a number of years, I've been bringing my students to one of the Somali markets in South Minneapolis. Everybody loves um, an outing, right? A field trip. And when my students and I would, would finish our studies in regards to biblical Christian doctrine, and comparing that to the teachings or the doctrine of Islam, we would go to one of these Somali markets simply for a cultural experience, a time to meet people and have conversations, um, to eat great African food and to shop, all of those great things. And without fail, someone would come up to me, approach me, and want to speak about Jesus now, I want, to, I want to make that clear. I wasn't the one instigating <clears throat> a conversation about Jesus. People wanted to talk about Jesus. And on one occasion, a man came up to me and handed me this book, Jesus, Prophet of Islam. You see, 
Everybody's got an opinion about Jesus. Everybody wonders who he is. And you don't have to be religious to wonder about him. Was he a prophet? Was he just a prophet? Was he simply a philosopher, a great teacher, a rabbi? See, people throughout the ages have wondered who is Jesus. And even in our our reading, our gospel reading for today, as Jesus enters into Jerusalem, this is what we hear. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar. There's so much happening, so much excitement, um, so much hullabaloo of the people. As he entered, they asked, who is this? Who is this guy? As people are, are celebrating and shouting, the people sitting around are simply asking, I don't get it. Who is this man? And as Jesus enters in, we see people cutting down palm branches, laying them before him, taking off their garments and laying them before him as he approaches and they are Donna. You know, in this moment, as they are doing all of these things, what we see historically is people responding to the entrance of a king, a sovereign king, showing submission and deference to a king. And even as all of this is going on, as the people consistently ask, who is this? You know, there's been a long history of this. The disciples even asked this question. Prior to entering into Jerusalem, you probably remember the scene, they're in a boat and there's a storm, and Jesus commands the wind and the waves to be still. And what's the disciples' response? Who is this? And about a year earlier, before they enter into Jerusalem on this Palm Sunday day, Jesus himself even asks his disciples this question. From Matthew 16, we hear Jesus say, who do people say the Son of Man is? And before we read on, just, just hold up here. Jesus is giving them a hint as to who he is. You see highlighted here, Son of Man. You see, this is a title that Jesus gives himself. No one else calls him Son of Man. His disciples don't call him that. The Pharisees certainly don't call him that. Jesus claims this title for himself. Read the Gospels. Throughout the Gospels, this is the title Jesus gives himself. And what's interesting about this is Son of Man is a prophecy about the coming king, about the coming Messiah from Daniel chapter 7. Here's the scene. Daniel looks and he sees in this vision the Son of Man, one like a Son of Man, coming on the clouds of heaven and approaching the Ancient of Days, who is God the Father. And God the Father, the Ancient of Days, gives to the Son of Man authority and glory and honor and sovereign power to rule over the nations. That's the Son of Man. And this is the title that Jesus gives to himself. It's fascinating. And so when Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they reply. Some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. Still others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Interesting. Jesus in this text is identifying himself as the coming king, the Messiah, the one promised through the prophets. And then Jesus in this text turns the camera on his disciples and he says these words, but what about you? Who do you say I am? I can imagine there was a pause. 
And Simon Peter replies, you are the Christ, meaning the Messiah. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. See, Peter's response is the invitation for us to know certainly who this king is. And in response, as Peter replies to Jesus, he is making the statement that you are ultimately the king. You are the promised one. You are the one who the prophets have told us about, the one who will come and rule and reign and make everything new and set things right again. You know, throughout scripture, we hear Jesus making claims to who he is as the king. And in our gospel reading for today, we see Jesus in three short verses display who he is as the king. You probably remember from our reading today that Jesus told his disciples to go into the city and when you enter, you will see a donkey, a colt there tied up and I want you to untie them and take them and if anyone asks, what are you doing? Simply say, the Lord has need of it and they will let you have it. See, Jesus is choosing in that moment to align himself with the prophecies from the Old Testament. And when he chooses to ride in on the donkey, he's aligning himself with Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. It says, look, look, pay attention. Your king is coming. He is righteous and victorious, humble, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Notice the text, notice, notice just the, the description of who this is coming as a king, riding on a donkey. He is righteous and victorious. No one is righteous but God. No one can, can claim anyone else or make anyone else righteous. God alone can do that, and he alone is victorious. But notice, notice his posture as he comes in. He is humble and riding on a donkey. You see, G Jesus chooses to ride in humbly, lowly, because he aligns himself also with Isaiah chapter nine, verse six, that says he is the mighty God, the wonderful counselor, the everlasting God, and then it says he is the prince of of peace. And as the Prince of Peace rides into Jerusalem, he is about to enter into the most hostile and violent war human history has ever known to make peace with his creation. Righteous and victorious. The second thing that happens in our lesson immediately, right after that we see happen as Jesus rides into Jerusalem. He goes immediately to the temple and we hear these words. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling. The Prince of Peace starts flipping tables because he is seeing the house of God the residence of God, the place where people can encounter the love and the majesty and the goodness of God being turned into something other than it was intended. And so again, we hear Jesus say, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it into a den of thieves. See, again, Jesus is aligning himself with the prophet Isaiah. I love this. I love when Jesus makes statements quoting Isaiah or any of the prophets. Track me on this. Jesus is the eternal word of God. In the Old Testament, Jesus existed. He is the eternal voice of God, commanding all things into existence. And so when the prophets would hear from God, they would hear, are you tracking me? they would hear from Jesus. And so Jesus 
speaks to Isaiah 700 years before Jesus is in the flesh. And Jesus communicates to Isaiah, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. And then the incarnate Jesus in the flesh quotes Isaiah 56 and says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. He is claiming the house of God, the temple of God as his own. Who's he saying he is? He is Lord and God and King and Messiah who has come into, as the Prince of Peace, come into, broke into human history to reconcile to himself and make right his house again. And then, if that wasn't enough, the very next verse in this gospel that we hear, this happens. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. It's the very next sentence. The prince of peace, flipping tables, driving out the money changers. And the blind and the lame came to him. The people in great need of healing, of hope, of restoration, they come to the king in his house. You know, in this text, as we read this, who, who came to Jesus, I'm also reminded of a year earlier in Jesus' public ministry, John the Baptist is imprisoned, doubt, worry, wonder is creeping into John the Baptist's thinking, knowing that he is probably about to die. He sends a message to Jesus and he asks him, are you the one? Are you the promised Messiah? And then he says these words, or should we look for somebody else? See, in that dark moment of his life, of John the Baptist's life, he was asking the same question that we have all been asking, that humanity has been asking. Are you the one? Are you really God? And Jesus' response in that moment, in that inquiry by John the Baptist was this. Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. In other words, yeah, that's who I am. I'm the king. I'm the Messiah. I am the promised one of God. And in that moment, Jesus is declaring his lordship as he ministers to, as he heals and restores relationship to God the Father. You know, in this text, both on that road into Jerusalem and in the temple, there is a repeat, a repeated text shouted by the people on the road and shouted by children in the temple. You know it. We sing it. It's this. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. You see, the people were crying out to this Jesus. And as they cried out, I don't know if you know this or not, sometimes we, we speak church language and we don't really know what we're saying. But this word, Hoshiana, Hosanna, is this. They are shouting. They are imploring. They are begging, please save us. And the people at that time, as they longed for reconciliation, as they longed 
for the tyranny of Rome to end as they longed for liberation from their oppression, their Hoshiana, their Hosanna, their please save us was limited. They did not fully understand the extent to what their king could accomplish for them, what he was going to do for all of us as they cried out, as we cry out. You see, Jesus came to set captives free. He came to set those people on that first Palm Sunday free. And not just from the tyranny or the oppression of a government, but from the tyranny and the oppression of their own brokenness, the brokenness of the world that surrounded them, their sin, and ultimately restore them back to relationship with God because he loved them, because he loves you. And so as Jesus sets his face to the cross, as he sets his face to suffer and die for the sake of humanity, to reconcile us to God, we cannot be short-sighted in what we understand the king has accomplished. There's a, a picture of his power and authority that we read in Revelation, the truth of what he has accomplished. Because in this moment, in human history, in first century, the enemy thought he had won because the king was going to die. But we read in Revelation, after this I looked and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, in other words, made right with God, with palm branches in their hands. Look at what they shout, crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God. Salvation belongs to our King who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. You see, friends, that's what this king has come to do. This king has come to reconcile the brokenness and the waywardness of this world, of you, to God the Father, so that you would know that you are loved, that you are redeemed, that your king has claimed you as his very own. I want to close with another piece of our scripture for today from Revelation. It says this, and then I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called faithful and true because he is. He is faithful and true to you. His name is is the word of God. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has his name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You see, your king will return again as well. And he will call all nations to himself. And in that moment, there will be no confusion of who he is. No confusion about his lordship and his reign and what he has accomplished because he is king and he is Lord and he is God. And so friends, I want to encourage you, turn your face to Jesus, your king. Don't be confused about who he is in your life because he is inviting you to follow him, to love him, to serve him, and to worship him and him alone. Let's pray. Almighty God, thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the word 
made flesh. You are the son of God. You are the king who has come to reconcile us to the Father. And so, almighty God, we pray that our attention, our affection, our worship would be to you and to you alone, that there would be no confusion, Jesus, about who you are, and that your sovereign reign, as you gather all nations to yourself, to worship you from every tribe and every language and every tongue, God, that we would celebrate your goodness and what you have accomplished, that you have invited us to be part of this as well, to wave our palm branches and worship you, the coming king. For your glory and our joy, we pray, amen. Friends, it has been so good to be with you today. I want to encourage you um, to continue this week um, in worship. So many opportunities for us to deepen in faith, to hear the word of God, and to grow as disciples so that others would know of the love of God as well, that their king has come and their king will come again. And so friends, join us this week in worship, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday. We would love to have you join us as we grow as his people, as his church. Now receive the blessing of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine down upon you and be gracious to you. May he look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We'll see you this week. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears have the cold.
You have seen